What is up, everybody? This is Pastor Jared with Freshman Youth Online. We got Danica over here scratching her face. Say what's up, Danica. Right. Say what's up, Allison over here on my what's right. Up? It's about to be Christmas. Today. It's that it's the season <laughs> of Christmasness. I am. What's that? What's that? Uh, that deer thing from uh, Frozen? Sven. Sven. Sven is a reindeer, but you could also be Max from The Grinch. The dog that wears antlers. That's subpar. That's if we talk dog. about Frozen, Danica might sing Let It Go. <laughs> um, that's Allison's job. Sorry. No, oh, okay. I'm Allison, good. you're up. Where's Lila when you need her? I got you guys. <laughs> let it go. Let it go. <laughs> all right. I'll save you guys all that uh, terrible sound of my voice. All right, Allison, tell us what's going on here. So we are here for, our, you know, our weekly Freshman Youth Online video. Mm. Um, it's a four part series. This being the last one of this series. Um, you go bye bye. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> we drop it every Wednesday at 6 p.m. on Facebook, on mm. YouTube, on Instagram, you said in our bio. It'll take you to the A Fresh Wind app. Like Danica said, she said Facebook. Yep. Mm. Also... <laughs> <laughs> At, on incl including this here video podcasting, my Bob, we have the uh, Sunday Devos, mm -hmm. which were pretty good today. Today we talked about joy. Um, so Maddie said something funny. I know Zach was uh, gave Maddie's boyfriend's name from Darren to Darlene, evidently, <laughs> and so I've been calling Maddie's boyfriend Darlene, and uh, she's been. Probably thinking about killing me one of these days, but I understand. <laughs> I have it coming. Anywho, we mean it. In, we mean it in jest. If this Darren, if you're watching, we love you. We'd love for you to come. Um, but I am <laughs> slightly offended that you haven't been to Freshman Youth a single time now. or any of the fun events we do yes, on Wednesdays. Like Wednesday, dude, you're the best segueer to get me out of rambling. Uh, I'm used to it. <laughs> Sundays, the fourth Sunday of every second Sunday, second Sunday of every month, we do something fun. Uh, this month we had the Christmas party, December tenth, mm -hmm. which was a pretty good time. We and then, the yeah. Yep, the we fourth Sunday. The porch. She yes. did. <laughs> she done did tripped. It was a good time. I didn't even trip. I just thought the steps were there and they weren't. That's the worst. Like when you've committed to something that's not there, just like you, all your weight's going on that step and you just beef it. Yeah, <laughs> Carter said I almost like a front flip. I was like, yeah, that's great. So, like we said, this is Danica's last week with us here. I'm just going to beat you up a little bit. I'm sorry. It's a little tough. Uh, this is Danica's last week, at, week series video here. Mm -hmm. uh, so, if you're interested in being on the, fre the Freshman Youth Online, give us a heads up. We have... Uh, you could text me. You could call Jared. Well, you can. Call me, beat me if you want to reach me. Kim Possible, baby. <laughs> uh, we are going to do something fun next week i don't know who is going to be on but we're gonna have a special guest on for the uh, fifth sunday yep we're gonna wednesday. do every fifth sunday we're gonna have someone special on i don't know who it is this month mm -hmm. uh, i have an idea if i'm gonna have on and we're gonna have some pretty good conversations but i've yet to finalize any plans um danica you nailed it last week you got that you got that dumbbell call real good like you to bomb.com you skipped our christmas question did I? You did. <laughs> well, it's right there in the script. <laughs> okay, where's it? Where's it say that? Oh, okay, yeah. I'm if supposed to ask. If you have any small children, have small them children, cover their ears. It's time to go. Cover your ears. Leave I'm sorry. <laughs> um, when you're in seventh grade, you can jump in freshman youth online. Uh, but as of now, you need to step out for about five minutes. Yep. That being said, this is your chance to get all the small children out. I'm going to ramble for another minute. <laughs> if you need to pause that video, do it now because it is a big question that I'm going to ask Danica. And if your small kids are in town and uh, leave. We don't want to ruin Christmas. All right, Danica. I gave I gave them every chance they can to get their kids out. What if, they're just a learner? What if they don't? What if they're then watching they without parents? They should have listened. If you're watching without parents... Honestly, that's check okay because it's a church video. <laughs> yeah, is, but like you you're, you're, you're about to regret. Just it trust me here. If you're younger than seventh grade, Bip. go on. Bip. Bye bye. Bip. Adios. Bip. Hasta luego. Bip. Bye bye. Goodbye. Adios. 
I think we gave him a I solid two minute else. lead. All right. All right. <laughs> Anyways. Danica, what age were you when someone told you that Santa wasn't real? No one told me. I found out myself. What? Yeah. How? All right. So, listen. I had... Okay. I, I got, love when you're about to tell the story. She says, <laughs> listen. Okay. So, I had an iPad or... It was either an iPad or an iPod first. But I had it one night and I was... You know how those, those kids that like look at the videos and love them like elves moving around? So that was me. And you wait, you're watching video of elves? Like you know how like the like car on camera elf moving. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So like I elf was that on a kid. shelf? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Okay. I was that kid. And Deal. then I found out by like because I realized that like I saw it, like it wasn't the actual elf moving. And so I looked it up and my I just ruined my own childhood at that point. <laughs> Because I looked, I looked it up myself, and so yeah. Did you cry? I don't. I don't know. Were you like? Were you like genuinely upset though? Oh yeah. Did you tell your mom? Like, go to your mom when you found out. Like, you no. lied to me. No. No. You just pretended like you were growing uh-huh. up and knew that. Yeah, I, I told her at like one point, and then I was we laughed about it. So I just want to be clear: this was last week, right? <laughs> no. Okay. Two weeks ago. No. <laughs> How long ago was this? How old were you? Uh, like before sixth grade, I think. Fair enough. Fair enough. Allison, yeah. you're yeah. up. Uh, How old were you when you found out Santa was fake? I was pretty young, honestly, because um, I found out from, I think, school. Somebody, I... Either that, I don't honestly don't even remember me. how I found out. I think it was school. <laughs> it was probably my sister. But we I never came believed home. in Santa. And I told my mom that I knew Santa wasn't real. And she had a one-on-one conversation with me that I could not tell my little brother that Santa was not real. So after that conversation, you walked right in there and told him? I was, I I was a brat when I was little. Okay. I'm pretty sure I told my mom I was going to tell him. Like I was, I was pretty evil. See, no, I can't say you were evil because I was the kid that ruined Santa for people. I never believed in Santa. My mom made it very clear. She's like, I am the one working to buy these presents, not some fake dude. It is not a thing. (laughs) Uh, No, she didn't like the whole like gift, like how if you were good enough, then you would get good presents because my mom was single and had a bunch of kids. And so uh, it wasn't always like the best present she could possibly have. So she knew there might be a time that we go back to school and not have the best presents. Mm -hmm. And so she didn't want us to think that we weren't good enough kids. So it's actually incredibly heartfelt as to why she told us Santa was fake really young. But (laughs) I didn't know this was happening, and I am very uncomfortable now. Why do you have that? Because we were talking about Santa. I thought I would bring Lila's Santa. Where where have you been hiding that? (laughs) It was definitely like in her pocket or something. I don't have pockets on these pants. It was right here on the table next to me. I just thought it was really cute. Somebody got him, got Lila a little this hand puppet. This is from my coworker Sue before I left Ridge Tool. She got Lila a Santa. I thought it was bucket. fitting. It was. It's very nice. <laughs> Freaked me out, but it was really nice. <laughs> I was confused, but you know. Oh, here he'll sit on my. All right, guys, let's jump into this. We uh, spend way too long talking about random. Well, how did you find sometimes. out? I no, literally, like my mom never, so never, like ever. never once did I believe in Santa. Huh. It was from the very beginning. Like my grandma and grandpa would write from Santa on it. But like we'd like we knew it was from them. Like that was like a weird joke my grandpa did. Like it wasn't he well, he wasn't trying to convince us. Like he was like, You like the present I got you? Well, I thought it said from Santa. Yeah, it was from me. Like it was that kind of thing. <laughs> but never believed in Santa. I'm superior to all of you. That's the moral of the story. <laughs> No. Okay. All right. So we talked about the good things that we get from God in the Christmas season. And so before we jump in, Allison's going to give us a quick recap. Okay. Um. So basically we went over how God always has a plan. Yep. Jesus completes God's plan yep. and God's plans bring joy. Yes, they do. Now, <coughs> I'm going to get real with you guys because the big idea for today is that God's plans bring sacrifice. You know, economics 101, everything has a cost, even God's plan. 
and that cost is a sacrifice. So as we go into this, let's talk about something we uh, we, we sacrificed. Me, I wrote down, if you guys can think of something on the fly, throw it in there. Me, I gave up my Xbox specifically because I was spending too much time on it. And it was just sucking all of my or energy. Or is it just because you don't want to play with me anymore? Because uh, I was just too okay. good for you? I told you she wasn't going to believe me. Because I was too good for you? <laughs> yes, you're just too good at uh, mm-hmm. Fortnite. Mm-hmm. And then you play Call of Duty and you're um, atrocious. No, I'm actually very good at that. I don't know what you're talking about. Wait, are you getting, did you get good? Because when I played with you, <laughs> you would like jump off buildings and like pull out a parachute that All wasn't right, there. Listen. Oh, okay. I haven't played since I played with you. <laughs> but in my memories, my Snapchat memories not that long ago, came up my memories. Uh, I took a picture of how many kills I got, and it was like 27. I'm proud of you, Danica. Then we have you to got those bots pretty good. We have to ignore the fact that I'm pretty sure how many times I died was almost as much as I killed someone, but that's besides the point. I mean, a one-to-one K to D is not that bad. Yeah, I have not played Xbox since like I played with you. Yeah, I was playing way too much, and so I sacrificed my Xbox. So that's just a an easy example of something that can be a sacrifice. Doesn't need to be necessarily the world and end of the world type sacrifice. Yeah. But I digress. Danica, you're gonna go ahead and jump in and read Luke chapter one. Why'd you shut it? Because it was just sitting there open. Uh chapter one, verses twenty six to thirty eight. Go ahead, hit us with it. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man named Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and the angel came to her and said, Greetings, favored favored woman. The Lord is with you, but she was deeply troubled by this statement, wondering what kind of greetings greeting this could be. Then the angel told her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Now listen, you will be conceived and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be, will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord of Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom will have no end. Mary asked the angel, how can this be, since I have not had sexual relations with a man? The angel replied to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will <clears throat> overshadow you. Therefore, the Holy One to be born with, the, with will be called the Son of God. And consider your relative Elizabeth, even she conceived a son in her old age. And this the sixth month for her who called childness. For nothing will be impossible with God. I am the Lord's servant, said Mary. May it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel left her. Mm. Amen. Ah, so can you imagine being Mary right now? All right. So the angel gave her a lot to process. So at first, Mary was really troubled. We see that. We talked about it this morning, actually, when Ryan preached. Everyone's always terrified when they see an angel. Understandably, angel shows up out of nowhere. Freaky looking things, to say the least. Uh, Flying around. I don't know exactly what Gabriel looks like. I don't know if they showed. I think a lot of times they show up like men. But still, they know it's an angel when they see him. Mm -hmm. Um, She was troubled, which makes sense. Um, It was also a major upset that Gabriel was like, hey, yo, you're about to have a kid. And she's like, hey, time out. (laughs) I'm actually engaged. This kind of throws a wrench in the whole plan. There's so much that she's probably thinking about. And she was confused as to how it was even possible that she was going to get pregnant when she was a virgin. It's not supposed to work like that. But in the end, she said, okay, she was going, she was ready to be part of God's plan for the world, even if it meant making some sacrifices. And those sacrifices, Allison, we were engaged for about five months. If at any point in time you were like, by the way, I'm pregnant, God got me pregnant, I would have been, mm, yeah, this one's a crazy one. <laughs> She's either lying through her teeth. Or she's crazy. I'm not quite sure. Mm-hmm. So that's like, think about having to like go to your husband and say, now an angel did go to uh, Joseph and was like, hey, yo, man, this is this the situation. All right. Let it's, him in on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but still, it's terrible. It's even socially, like it's, it's a big thing, especially back then. Yeah. So Allison, it is your turn to read. We actually read through this today, I believe. No, we sang a song based off this. Continue. Go ahead. Okay. 
So I'm going to uh, read Luke 1, 46 through 55. Um, and it says, And Mary said, My soul praises the greatness of the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, because he has looked with favor on the humble condition of his servant. Surely from now on, all generations will call me blessed, because the Mighty One has done great things for me, and his name is holy. His mercy is from generation to generation on those who fear him, and he has done a mighty deed with his arm. He has scattered the proud because of the hearts of because of the thoughts of their hearts. He has toppled the mighty from their thrones and exalted the lowly. He has satisfied the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering his mercy to Abraham and his descendants forever, just as he spoke to our ancestors. And so in that, we can see Mary expressed a lot of joy, but that doesn't mean that she wasn't making a big <laughs> sacrifice with this. Um, she was a teenage girl who was expecting a baby. Like, <laughs> that's it's crazy. It's a big thing. I um, never imagine. Right? <laughs> like, <nah. laughs> Like, it had to have been, like, when, when we say a teenage girl, she was most likely relatively young. Like, mm-hmm. sub-16. Yeah, so I could never think about that. that. Right. You're having God. Right. Like, you know, you know the situation. It's a freaky situation. Right. And then that's and then on top of that, all of the sacrifices. So um, she would experience a real pregnancy with all of those stuff. As I know firsthand, Allison was in a lot of pain during both pregnancies. I was not. Allison was. And so she broke my hand a couple of times, squeezing kind of hard. Very mean. Uh, I'm just kidding. It's very uncomfortable. <laughs> and yeah. I can't From imagine my, going through that when, I don't know, you just, surprise, you're having a baby. Right. But it's think, just coming. <laughs> think about all of the judgment and assumptions that people made, right? So, like, this isn't today. Today, somebody gets pregnant. You're like, oh, my goodness, so-and-so got pregnant. There's also a million other people who probably shouldn't be pregnant at this time who are pregnant. Let's be real. It's not uncommon. Mm -hmm. I'm not advocating by any means, but it's not uncommon. Right. It was uncommon then. It did not happen. You did not do anything before you were married. Mm -hmm. And so for this to be happening, there was going to be judgments. There was going to be assumptions. There was going to be accusations. There was going to be drama. All of that stuff that she was going to have to bring on to herself, even though other things were going on. But Mary trusted that God and good things were in store, even if she had to make sacrifices in the meantime. And it reminds me of a passage in the book of Romans that captures Mary's attitude in this moment. It's actually Romans 12, 1. I'm at Romans 1, 1. Let me jump over a little bit here. Romans 12, 1, it says, Therefore, brothers and sisters, in view of the mercies of God, God, I urge you to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is true worship. So hearing that, you probably think like, wow, this is really weird. Like my body is going to be a sacrifice. Yes and no, right? So what Paul meant is that because Jesus sacrificed himself for our sins once and for all, we no longer need to make religious sacrifices in order to be loved by God. <coughs> We've already lo- uh, we're already loved just the way we are. But if we're going to make any sacrifices to God, God invites us to sacrifice ourselves, to give ourselves to God fully, just like Jesus gave himself fully for us. And when you think about it, you start to realize that Christmas is all about sacrifice. The very first Christmas, you would never, never happened without Mary sacrifice. Because of her love and trust in God, she sacrificed her body, her time, her energy, all of these things to have Jesus. And on the way, on the very first Christmas, another sacrifice happened as well. By becoming, by coming to earth, Jesus, God was made, by coming to earth as Jesus, God was making a sacrifice too. Jesus chose to give up his heavenly existence in order to experience an earthly life. He, he chose all of these. He chose to live on earth. He chose to deal with the drama that people have. He chose to deal with the temptations that people have. He chose to deal with the crucifix that 
most of us will never experience, but is atrocious. Um, Can you imagine that, though? Oh, my goodness. Like choosing to come down and go through all of that. All like. of it. <laughs> for us. Like, just imagine how madly in love you need to be and so on for that to happen. Mm-hmm. See, Ryan was, I'm going to diver, divert a little bit because I was just thinking, but it made me think about it. Ryan was preaching this morning about, uh, like, the shepherds. And one, one of the things that, like, jumped into my mind is probably how loved the shepherds feel, felt because of that. So, like, the shepherds are the lowest of low. And so the angels, when they came and told them, and said that God is coming for you, right? And so no matter how low you feel that you are, like, God is coming for the, the least of these, the worst of the worst. And so Jesus died for you. And so I've heard, heard people say, like, oh, I've, I, I can't go to church. I'll get struck down by lightning. Yeah, no, God died for you. For those people who think like that. Oh, I, my, my, I'm, I'm crazy. I'm, I'll never do that. I like people, I've done terrible things. Yeah, that, that's why God died for you. Mm-hmm. And so that sacrifice that God made was for you. And so God plans, God's plans for us and for the world are always good. But just like Mary, Jesus, and so many others who have gone before us discovered God's plan does require sacrifice. So Danica, tell us what a sacrifice is and what we can do as Christians. Um, a sacrifice, it always is cost something because like that's what a sacrifice is. Like that you have to sacrifice something of your own. And um, a lot of people hesitate with it because you might be like afraid, like, you're wasting your time, money, energy, and like giving up stuff and losing friends, stuff like that. And but it's, and we're talking a lot of us would hesitate to be part of God's plan yeah. because these things would happen. Okay, continue. I'm sorry. Um, and that following God's plan would make our lives like boring or restrictive and with like stuff that you like to do and like it might make you unhappy and stuff. But um, you have to remember how full of joy Mary was after she decided to make a sacrifice in order to be part of God's plan. And um, God's plan is always bigger and more full of joy than any plans we could design for ourselves. Exactly. That's mm-hmm. what, that's so important. We, we always think that we know more until we actually do it. And it's, it's, and then 20 minutes later, we're like, well, I'm going to follow my plan. So like, if you're like struggling with something right now and you're like, I'm going to struggle, like, I'm not judging you. <laughs> Give me 20 minutes. And I'm like, I've got a good plan. God's like, no. And I'm like, but God, hear me out. Like, no, we, we've all been there. It's not, it's not the best thing, but that struggle, that, that tension that's there is there. And it will always be there as long as we are human. However, look at what Mary did. Right. She said, all right, God, you first say yes before we even get started. And then boom, God blew her mind. Right. And that was just so selfless of her too. And so, can you think of anything right now that you can reprioritize to make yourself more selfless? Mm. What can we sacrifice? Yeah. Uh, spending a lot of time with like stuff like online and like spending more time with God. Yeah. Right. So first and foremost, you can always give your time. Uh, that could be spending time with God. That could be serving. So, right. So how do we serve? Um, we can go to a nursing home. We could do different things where we're not, we're not even doing anything crazy, anything strenuous. We're just sitting there like, Hey, I'm going to spend some time with the old man mm-hmm. and talk with him. That's sharing, that's sharing the gospel through actions. Right. But then you can use, you, you can also sacrifice your energy. What are some ways you can sacrifice your energy, Danica? Like going out and doing stuff that requires you to have energy for it and like getting up early and going to church and yep. um, going out and feeding my homeless like we did in Chicago and stuff and getting exactly. up early to do stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yo, it's Sunday. Mo- it's Sunday. You got Sunday morning cartoons. You got breakfast. All these things that you could be doing that's not church. Right. And it does take your energy to get out of bed early. Sleeping in. <laughs> Exactly. Like how much, how many of us, like maybe you're not going out doing anything crazy, but you're hanging out texting your buddy till 3 a.m. I was Xbox until 3 (laughs) a.m. Yeah. And then you go to sleep and wake up a few hours later to go to church. Mm -hmm. I understand that. Danica, what's the last thing we could sacrifice? Um, Your stuff, like your personal items, stuff like that. 
Like what? Mm. Tithing. Uh, Maybe your clothes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I said tithing. I don't know. Like I kind of just spat it out there with a, like <laughs> impulse. That was a thing. But money. But yeah, you can you can give your money. Yeah. Like, yo, Danica, are, are you, do you by chance happen to be a, a billionaire? <laughs> Millionaire? No. Do you happen to have like $750,000 on a bank account? I, um, I wish. And can okay. you spare some? <laughs> yeah. So my point is that you don't need to be a billionaire. You don't need to be Jeff Bezos. You don't need to be like someone crazy with a bunch of money. 20 bucks when you can. 15 bucks. Mm-hmm. It makes a big difference. I owe you. Thank you. <laughs> Danica, as you guys have witnessed, owes me a million dollars. So the first million dollars she makes after she graduates high school can go to me. Awesome. Totally. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a verbal commitment. I am saving this forever. So we just we just talked about some ways that we could sacrifice your time, your energy, and your stuff. There you can do all of those three things. And so as we go into this Christmas season, I want to encourage you guys to be willing to sacrifice. Acknowledge that God's plan has sacrifices and then go into that with an open heart. Say yes before we even get started. Mary said, hey, whoa, what's happening here? All right, that's what you need me to do. Let's do it. What is God asking you to do? It could be it could be something big that's going to change your life radically. It could be something outrageous. But it could also be something very pretty simple. Mm-hmm. And so I want to end with that. There's nothing else there's nothing else to go on with. We usually take way too long and we already did. But uh <laughs> it's No, you forgot the sound. Yeah, we didn't do the game. <laughs> Whoops. We'll do it now. So we'll start. Oh. We'll start a new one. We'll start a new one on Monday. Or next, next week. The, the beginning of the new year. <laughs> yeah. Danica. We talked about Santa for too long today. Sorry. <laughs> I brought up that, that you won the sound last time. Yeah. And then you that's when you skipped the Christmas yeah, question. And then we had to go back and then you skipped that again. So it's, it's my fault. fault okay. Mm. I'm sorry. I wanted to show everybody the cute hand puppet. <laughs> still not my fault all right guys let's pray father god thank you for this day thank you for this opportunity to just film some with danica and spend uh four episodes just talking with her and seeing um her grow and her welcome into walk into this christmas uh christmas lesson and teach something lord thank you for calling her higher in that i pray lord that uh we can remember that your plan is the best and that there's joy in it but it does take some sacrifices and that's why you give us joy because joy isn't joy isn't fleeting joy is everlasting and that joy is found in you no matter the sacrifices we make lord and i praise you and i thank you for this day and uh i pray that we have a great christmas in your name amen amen see you later guys merry christmas